Welcome to Membership Voice. I'm Carol O'Shea, the host for tonight's webinar. Of course, I have with me uh, Alison Dalzell, who's going to be facilitating the workshop and doing presentation beforehand. She's a wonderful Rotarian, one of the people who lives the ethos that Rotary stands for, a believer in people, in community, as well as being an economist, a futurist, one of the founders of the Beaufort Rotary Club, which is an innovation in its own right. And having been a Rotarian for 15 years, Alison knows her way around this space. And one of the things that she is really passionate about is helping Rotarians and Rotary Clubs get hold of this strategic planning thing and doing it properly rather than just making a trophy to sit on a shelf somewhere. So with that little background, I am delighted to introduce Alison Dalzell. Over to you, Alison. So this is subtitled Charting the Future for Your Club in a Post-Pandemic World, but I've put post in brackets with a question mark there because I'm not sure that we're going to be in a post-pandemic world anymore, at least for another generation or two until we forget this one, if we ever do, because, you know, there may be another one in a shorter time than the gap between the last one. So what we're going to be from now, I think, will be in a pandemic-aware world which will be a different world than the world that we've left behind. And someone said in their sharing earlier that they could kind of want to take into account what the implications of all this will be for them as a club. And I think there will be significant implications for everybody and, and not least of all for Rotary. So... One thing that you will have noticed with everyone saying where they're at is that our starting points are all quite different. Some of us have got a strategic plan. Some of us are just starting one. Some of us actually, uh, we did a little survey and some of you have got you know, a plan that has got out of date. So everyone's starting from different points. But everyone's kind of asking, well, where to from here? And it is a time of great disruption. So it's a perfect time to ask you know, now what should we leave behind and what should we take with us and, and what should we start new? So it's a perfect time for strategic planning. So for any clubs like Emma was sharing, you know, they've been going for a while without a strategic plan. doesn't mean they didn't know what they were doing. It just means they haven't documented that. And maybe this is a really great time and opportunity to actually take that step and say, right, now that we know what we know and now that we've been doing what we've been doing, Right, because you don't need a plan to do stuff. Right? We all know that. All of you who are doing stuff and haven't got plans, it hasn't stopped you from doing stuff. But have you been doing the things that are most in alignment with where you and your members want to be and want to take your club and, and the contribution that you want to make? And that's what strategic planning should help you to do. So I just wanted to start with three key principles for strategy development. And honestly, I could have filled a page. These ones, to me, are the most important. Some of you will have other principles. These, this isn't by any means an exhaustive list. But I think number one, absolutely first and foremost, is that your strategy should be of and by your members. It's not something that someone goes away and does in a back room or that the board would do. It's something that members create together. So whatever you do, if you do nothing else, do, do something that really engages your members in helping to create and, and kind of articulate that future. It should be inspired, right? You should be inspired when you're kind of working out what that vision and, and direction is for your club. And it should also be inspiring for yourselves and for others not just your own club members, but potentially inspiring for uh, people who might be interested in joining your club. You know, it should be something that you're really proud of. If it's on your website, there's a link on your Facebook page where your key messages are there and it's inspiring to others and also potentially to partners who might help you to deliver your plan. So other, other parties who, who you might work with. And to be honest, if you, if you read your strategic plan or you get halfway through your vision and you notice that you've fallen asleep, then it's probably not the best plan. You should probably kind of have another crack at it. All right, it should be something that has you feel a little bit, you know, sitting up straighter, ready to go, kind of, yeah, this is what we're up for. And third, it should be clear about your priorities. I don't know how many strategic plans I've read where by the end, 
I was actually really no clearer about what they were actually going to focus on than I was at the beginning. There are so many things that you can do. If there's nothing in your plan that helps you to prioritise or that reflects your priorities, then it's almost, it's not just that you don't know what you're saying yes to, you don't know what you would say no to. It's going to not give you any guidance and it's not going to give you any real clear indication to help shape what your work program should be, but also the decisions that you make as you go along. So I think those three principles to me are, are my top, they're my personal top three. But as I say, that's not an exhaustive list by any means. And then, you know, strategy, strategy. You can meet all those principles, have the most beautiful strategic plan, but that doesn't mean anything's going to actually happen. So how do you actually make it happen? How do you make it real? So the three key principles for strategy impl implementation, firstly, to set who will do what and when they will do it, monitor and keep it on track, and learn and as you go, learn from what you're doing, communicate progress and achievements and celebrate. It's really important. And that's just kind of closing the loop. And then obviously that feeds back into your next iteration and so you go on in the cycle. So just so you, you know, that's where I'm coming from when I'm just talking about strategic planning is those three key principles for strategy development and for strategy implementation. And everyone will be at different points, as I say, as a starting point. Our club, we've got a fantastic strategic plan. We've done an implementation plan, but we probably haven't been so good at the monitoring and keeping on track or communicating progress and achievements. That's probably not been our strong suit so far. That's something in the next round I really want to put a much bigger focus on. So, you know, you can just keep on that continual improvement kind of pathway. Okay, but we are where we are. So I wanted to, I, me and Kira had a lot of discussion about the fact that everyone's going to be starting from a different place and I wanted to do something that was relevant no matter what your starting point was. So I've got this really great tool. Speaking of, someone said that they want to come and steal ideas. I do that all the time. It's so good. So I've stolen this idea from the Centre for Community Investment. I've adapted it a little bit. But it's, I just want to give credit there to the Centre for Community Investment and you can Google them. They do some really great stuff. And they've developed this strategy triage tool. And it's perfect because it works whether you've already got a plan or not. So you can do it based on what you're doing. It doesn't have to be written down what you're doing. If you're doing anything, you can still use this tool. It's, it's a collaborative process and it can generate very practical results. And it's easy to do online or in person. So you can do it in a group like we're going to do now or online, or you can do it in a, in a room physically present together. And what I'm going to do is just going to run through the tool and then that's going to be the end of me blabbing on and we're going to get stuck in and have a crack at doing it. All right. So are you excited? You're all excited on the inside where it really counts. Yeah, a few thumbs up. Awesome. All right, so what well, I'm going to go a little bit more into detail about the guiding question in a minute, but the guiding question is, is the, the, the thing that you want to achieve, right? So what will it take to, well, and the dot, dot, dot is what you, what you want to achieve. And I'll say a bit more about that in a minute. But then you've got these six categories. You think about what, what you already do and what you possibly might be interested in doing. And... In light of that guiding question, you say, well, what should we retain from the pre-pandemic time? So let's just say, for example, you're already running a really successful initiative, maybe let's say a, like a stationary drive. For, we were doing one previously in our club, which was stationary drive for students who were refugees. So we might say, okay, that's awesome. It was, it was before, it still will be. We want to keep doing that. Great, so we'll keep that there. And then what do we want to retain from the pandemic response? So it may be that you've already introduced new things that you go, oh my gosh, that was amazing and we don't want to let that go. So maybe you've been doing online meetings. You might not want to do all your meetings online from now on, but maybe once a month you do or once a quarter or whatever. So you might retain something like that from your pandemic. Then there might be something that you want to pause. You want to say, actually, this may still be relevant again in the future, but over this next recovery period, it's just not going to be something that we should be putting any effort into 
it's while we've got other much higher priorities. So you might put something on pause and come back to it later. You might start something new. So let's just say, for example, I don't know, you might have noticed that in the community around your club that the during this time of the pandemic response, it's become obvious that social isolation is a really you know big issue. And you want to actually start something new to address that. Maybe that's even your guiding question. How do we address that? So you might consider new initiatives there. Then the fifth category is what do we want to honour and let go? And these are things that perhaps it's time, and it might have nothing to do with the pandemic, by the way, or any change or anything. It might just be that this, this is a great question to ask at any time. Is there things that we're just holding on to just because of the way we've always done them? Maybe there are things that are no longer serving the purpose that they once were, but we don't let them go brutally, right? We let things go gently and with honour, you know, for this purpose that they have served. And we say, you know, we do, we do something around that. I think one of the reasons why clubs that find change so hard is that we're not very good at honouring and letting go. We either keep things that we shouldn't keep or we are brutal about it. And nothing in between, you know, we don't honour the people that are, that are associated with and the things that they've achieved. So I think that's a really important aspect of this too. And last but not least, there might be things that we want to investigate. We just don't have enough information. We need to talk to more people. We need to find out more about it. What is the real need? You know, that, so you might put things on the list that you haven't made a decision about, you don't know enough about, but you kind of think there might be some juice there. And that's your sixth category. So that's our tool. And we're just going to have a little play with it now. Because everyone, you already have enough knowledge about your clubs just to have a bit of a practice with this. So when you do go away and do this for real, because this is just going to be a practice in a minute, when you do it for real and you're working with your club, the guiding question will be what you want to achieve. And you can pick a question at any level. You can do this for multiple questions. It's, re it's a really great way to, you know, you can break down your areas of interest into different questions and apply this to each one, you will find straight away that there's a lot of overlap in what you want to keep and not keep and all that. And that's great. That'll really help to clarify and sharpen up your thinking. Or you can say so you can pick a bigger picture or a smaller picture question. It's, it doesn't matter. Now, for the purpose of this exercise, it's just a practice. You can't get it wrong. Just pick a question. So as I finish explaining this, just start to think, what's a question? that you would apply this exercise to. And so the question starts with, what would it take to, and it could be, as I know somebody had the question, what would it take to regenerate our membership? It might be, what would it take to eliminate social isolation in our community? What would it take to, you know, you can just pick whatever, whatever area that you're interested in for the purpose of this exercise. So what I'm going to get you to do now is just give you a couple of minutes to just like have a think and write down what your guiding question is that you're going to work with. And then I'm just going to get a couple of you to be willing to volunteer and share your questions. So we just get a sense of the sort of questions people are going to use. Okay, so my question was, what would it take to make Rotary exciting again for existing and new members? Oh, awesome question. Yes, love it. All right, fantastic. And Greg? Uh, very similar. Um, what I really wrote was, what would it make, take to make the club more attractive to the rest of our community's demographic? Perfect. Uh, younger people and, and other cultures. Great, brilliant. Okay. Who has, has somebody else got another one? David, what, what was yours? Yeah, so I, I wrote down what would it take to adapt to meet the needs of new generation volunteers. Oh, nice. Sort Great. Of, uh, very similar to what Greg's saying, I think. Yeah, but it's interesting to hear the nuance, you know, that you put into that. So, yeah, everyone's going to come at this from slightly different angles. So that's great. Awesome. Okay, who else had their hand up? Ishwa. And then Elizabeth. So mine was, uh, what would it take to increase uh, engagement amongst the road track clubs in WA? Oh, nice. Love it. Okay, Elizabeth. Uh, how to structure our meetings going forward. How to structure your meetings going forward. Great. Awesome. Fantastic. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is get you just to spend, just spend a little bit of time. So you, you're not going to do the whole thing, right? This is just going to be, just think of an example or two in as many boxes as you can. There might not be something, right, that you want to pause. So you don't, you don't force it. You don't have to answer every box. These are just inquiries. These are areas to look into. So just go through each one and just put down, you know, one or two or three, whatever, into as many boxes as is appropriate to your question. And then we're going to just get some sharing around that. Okay, now before we start, has anyone got any questions about this? Is everyone clear what they're doing? All good? All right, one, two, three, go. And if you do have any questions as you go, just write them in the chat. I'll get a couple of people just to just to share where they got to with that. Tanya. Okay, so my question was, what would it take to make Rotary exciting again for existing and new members? And this is kind of one of my bugbears yeah. <laughs> for me because personally, if it wasn't for my district governor role in being out and about helping clubs, I may not have been going back to my club. So it's something that I really want to focus on going forward. Yeah. So um, things that we would retain for keeping the for for existing and new members, I've put our book sale because it's a really big community draw card and it really does get our members working a lot. Retaining from the pandemic response, well, nothing that our club did because they did nothing. But big picture. I would certainly like to see the Rotary Club become more of a resource for other agencies to use. We we do not sell ourselves well as being a, a resource in that regard. Something that I think we should pause would be our fundraising, weekly speakers, sergeant sessions and meals. Fundraising because post-pandemic, I don't think it's a good look to be out asking people to put their hands in their pockets and parting with their cash because a lot of people are going to be in a lot of tricky situations. Yeah, yeah. And I'd like to see us start more community engagement, getting out and helping other groups on rotary nights instead of just going to meetings. My district conference that was cancelled, the whole day on the Saturday was participants were going to be out helping community groups with other projects rather than sitting listening to speakers so yeah, yeah we, we've still got all those projects to do now um, yeah. we just haven't got a conference to do them in with a few extra people to help us so I'm yeah. looking forward to being able to do that and I'd like us to investigate being more involved as a club with things like civil defense our local community foundation and with our schools Okay, fantastic. So the honour and let go, was that was that re was your pause really code for honour and let go? Oh yeah, well that too. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, um, like what one thing I could hear in that, so what I could imagine was if you were sitting around with your club members and actually doing that exercise in a group how great it would be to get the richness of everybody's perspectives on what they mm. would think. You know, so some people would would probably be right with you and, you know, you'd find some things would really float to the top, but, you know, other people might go, oh, we can't, we can't pause or honour and let go our weekly meetings. What are you talking about? Are you mad? You know, so you can kind of have that, have that debate and have that discussion and get everyone's perspectives in it. And then once you've decided, well, how easy would it be with the sort of things you're talking about? Say, right, well, who's actually going to do this? Who's actually mm -hmm. going to take responsibility for you know, recreating our meetings, who's going to take responsibility for, you know, engaging with these other interested, you know, parties in our community and, and when are they going to do that and who do they need help from and, you know, da-da-da. Mm. So, you know, next thing you know, you've got a plan. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay, great. Well, we've got time for one more. So who else would like to share? Ishwa. Okay, so... My question was, what would it take to increase engagement amongst the Rotaract clubs in WA? And so what I had for retain from pre-pandemic was, right now we have ongoing instant messaging conversations with all of the club presidents. So that happens between myself and them, and then we have a group amongst all of the club presidents. 
It's yeah. not particularly well used by the presidents. It's still right now very one way I kind of post in there to send them information, but I don't really get a lot of questions back in that forum. So not very not very engaging so far? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd like to retain that. I'd like to see it change so that there's more conversation happening rather than just a monologue. Oh, sorry, can I just jump in there? Because I forgot yes. to say, in those retain ones, you you can retain with modifications. So that's a really great example of that. Thanks, Ishwa. I think, oh, thanks for the reminder. Yep, carry on. In But there's nothing much else in this space that has been done for the last little while. So some of the things that I would like to start. Uh, so one of those was, having regular club meetings between, uh, sorry, regular meetings between the club presidents. Yep. So these would be in person, online, however it would work. And with the aim being to discuss challenges and to try not to have too much fluff in, in those meetings to make it valuable for them. So yep. they could write up some notes, send those through. We could have all the success stuff. Uh, something to help set the mood for the meeting, but then really the meat of it would be what are the challenges that people are having? Can we talk about those and see how we can help each other? And then also to help around visibility of club events because it's an issue that uh, we don't tend to know when everybody's holding their events. People tend to clash with their events and it makes it hard for clubs to attend each other's events when they don't know what events are happening and when they're happening on the same night. Yeah. And something to investigate was as we return to a stage where we can get more and more people together, can we also increase the amount of social activity that happens between the club? So just having intra-club socials or having a district-wide kind of social uh, calendar. Fantastic. And that's a really interesting point too, because quite often in our strategic plans, you know, we can get a bit silo and not think about the wider Rotary family and how we connect in and, and how we could be working together better to achieve those, those outcomes. Thank you. Anyone like to make a final question or comment, David? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Alison. I like your priorities and your, your triage model and all that that's excellent practical things like that are really always helpful and i think that you know that your your key points are really hitting the mark one thing that i've learned from good old experience was that it's really important as you said to bring people with you mm. and mm. Um, one of the things that we did that worked really well for us well actually happened in a couple of years prior to when I was president when we really did this strategic plan and that was that we did a survey of members and we were able to identify what they liked most about the club what they disliked most you know in yeah. terms of where they'd like the club to be and things that they'd like to change and if you're mindful of those things you know as you're developing the plan when it comes to involving you know and, and getting acceptance it makes such a difference so i just think you know seek first to understand yes and then sort of take you know think about a lot where the directions you want to go but if you're taking the views of others it makes such a difference yes absolutely and i think okay. club surveys are a vital tool absolutely yeah. yeah and the other thing too is uh, it's absolutely crucial is Often we, you know, strategic plan is meant to be a longer term focus and, you know, five years actually if you're really yeah. being a pure strategic plan. And yeah. the, the thing is if you're just sort of coming in as a president or, or a district governor or whatever and it, you're just thinking about that one year, it just doesn't work because you've, you've got to, you, there'll be people that you, you want to be carrying it on after you'll finish your term. So it's very, very, very wise to, Take a troika approach, as one of the old RI presidents said. You know, three people thinking about the thing and, and agreeing on what these the key things are as you develop the plan together. I made a really wise decision by involving my president elect. So he owned the plan, and not only that, but he had lots of great ideas as well. And the Brilliant. guy that followed him as well. So 
we all sort of own the same thing. You might adapt it each year a bit, but you're really driving it one year to the next. Absolutely, so, and and it should be you know monitoring and reporting back every year. And of course, it's that club engagement ultimately that should be the glue of your plan. But I totally agree with you about that train of of the past, current, and future president. But your club members really are the ultimate glue of your plan. Awesome. Well, that's a fantastic note to end on, actually. I just want to thank you all for your attendance and participation. I hope you've all got something useful out of that, out of that tool and out of that discussion. Um, I want to wish you all the best for your strategic planning and for your action and monitoring and closing the loop. And uh, yeah, we'll probably see you on another Zoom sometime. If you could join me, please, in thanking Alison for her time. Oh, thank you, and thank you all too.